All right, there we are. You know those moments in life where you go to start a live stream and then your computer loses track of your microphone? That's what we just occurred here. It's, it's a wonderful time. Hi everybody, I'm Matt with K15T and we're gonna talk about successfully and exceptionally uh, managing projects with Confluence. This is an exciting time because uh, you never know what's gonna happen because as we just showed, this is actually live. I am joined by Stefan, who is in the chat. He will be our mix master. He is joining us from his vacation. Um, our mix master for today, um, a man of mystery, a man of resources. Keep an eye out for his name. He'll be dropping things into the chat. Um, also, if you would hit that like button on the stream, I guess that helps the YouTube algorithms promote the live stream. I don't really know how that works. I just know that it does. So if you would hit that, that would be amazing. Um, thanks so much, everybody in the chat for letting me know that you couldn't hear me. I, it's good to be here. It's good to be heard. Um, one other really exciting thing. Hold on at the end of the live stream because we will be jumping right into the premiere of our latest video. It is our latest and greatest. We have spent a lot of time preparing this video for you, and we will be exploring all sorts of areas of project management and kicking off, hopefully, a whole bunch of project management-focused videos in the future. So hold on for that. I'm really, really excited. But let's jump into talking about collaboration and project management. So project management is just absolutely essential in our companies, right? But it is really, really hard sometimes to collaborate on projects for a lot of different reasons. Often our tools are kind of disconnected from each other, or we are working with team members or stakeholders who <laughs> aren't so focused on the project management side of things, they just want to do their thing or get their report and get out. So, um, it, it, it can vary. So if you jump into the, the poll that we just threw into the chat, I would love to know the answer there. And also, I'm curious, um, if you just let me know in the chat, what part of managing a project is the hardest for you to collaborate on with people? Are you, know, are you running into issues with tools? Or do you have people who are just not chiming in? They're not saying things? Like, What's the hardest part of collaborating on a project for you? Whether you're managing it, whether you're participating it, let, you know, let me know. <laughs> Let me know uh, what you're running into. And yeah, Taiwan, um, you better believe that video is going to be great. Uh, hold on. It's going to be fantastic. I'm so excited for everybody to finally see it. I've been listening to myself for far too long. So let's talk about collaboration in project management. This is a tricky thing because there's so much to it. So for example, um, you know, it might be an issue with task management. So it might be that people are just off doing their tasks and not communicating. Where are they? You know, How far are they, are they through the task? If they run into a blocker for their task, that can be a problem. Or maybe you're having trouble collecting the status of a project and like communicating that to people. Or perhaps um, collecting and sharing the status of multiple projects and getting those you know, in front of the stakeholders and the team members who care about those things. Or maybe um, <clears throat> excuse me, you're having trouble communicating updates to stakeholders, those things that they truly care about. Um, those, <laughs> that can be really difficult, especially if a stakeholder is a busy person. It's hard to get those updates in front of them. Um, I check in the chat here. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Christian mentioned that communication is always like a too many cooks in the kitchen situation. Uh, yeah, and then the lack of leadership focus. Um, that's tricky, especially when it comes to stakeholders, right? Because you're like, okay, I am updating you on everything here. Why, why are you not getting this? I've broken it down into three bullet points, and you're just not getting those bullet points. Some of this comes down to, <clears throat> I think, a disconnection from the way the place where we're managing our project and the the tools that we're using to actually manage the information around it. So let's look at a few different problems together around project collaboration and see how we could work in Confluence to, to make these better. Okay, so here is something that y'all might be familiar with. <laughs> and this is the infamous, we are managing our project in a spreadsheet. Um, <laughs> you've probably seen these before. I mean, this is a pretty good one. Um, shout out to, um, I think it was Smartsheet who made this particular template that I'm using here. Um, thank you for your contribution. Um, 
it's okay, right? We, we can kind of see the status of things and the priority. They, they did some fun things where you can pick the priority. That's that's kind of groovy cool. Um, you know, you have your deadlines. Here's a here here's where it gets kind of messy, right? This is a one sentence description of each of these tasks. But like, what if it was a paragraph? What if I couldn't sum it up in a sentence? This it's just very very visually messy. Nobody wants to. Um, wants to be looking at one of these, not for a long period of time, not to find things that they really want to find. Uh, Taiwan said the hardest part of getting, uh, the hardest part is getting the right people in the room. <laughs> Who does what is a common question. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And that's, that's kind of why I wanted to start talking about task management first, because I feel like it's really hard to get the right information from all the people doing different tasks into one place, uh, in a place where then those same people can go and reference like what is somebody else working on. So, okay, so we could have our tasks right here on a spreadsheet, but I'm begging you, please don't. Um, Excel and, and Sheets and Numbers, they're great applications for certain things, but they're just not meant for project management. <laughs> uh, and I think we all know that. So in a different approach here, would be to use Confluence as our central spot for all collaboration around the project. And that means that we bring a lot of that stuff that we are managing in um, Excel in our spreadsheet today, we bring it in here. And that means that we move away from external comments on, you know, in, in your task management software or sending people emails with the spreadsheet attached or sending messages in Slack or, um, you know, maybe uh, just saying, hey, go reference the spreadsheet every day. Like people are not going to do that, I'm, I'm sorry to say. So let's see how we can bring everything together in a real way in Confluence. So the first would be, let's say we're using a task management um, app. And, and I hope that you are. You know, Confluence has action items, which are great for assigning basic tasks for people. But if you're working with a team of more than two people on a, on a large enough project, you want to use some kind of to-do sort of app, which is great because Confluence integrates with a bunch of those. So here is an example. I have my project page here for um, <clears throat> the swag store that the team is trying to set up. And right here, I am bringing in each of the tasks from Jira. They're just like right here, pulled in. I can click any one of these to jump over to Jira, but you can see I'm getting a whole bunch of information right here from those. And these are dynamic. They're being pulled in. When someone makes a change in Jira, if I hit the refresh button here, these will update, right? You're gonna get this if you're working with Asana or Monday.com or Jira or Trello. They all have Confluence integrations with stuff like this, right? So that you're bringing in a lot of these <laughs> task things that are currently, you know, you as the project manager or your project manager has to manually enter these things and make sure they're kept up to date, which is always a, a bit rough. Um, let me know if in the chat if you are uh, currently the person who has to manually update things like this and how that's going for you. If you're loving that, maybe you do. Maybe you love the control, making sure that things are up to date, or maybe, you know, maybe not. Um, <clears throat> Another great thing, right, is Jira, for example. What a beautiful task management app. Um, app. When did Jira get such a glow up? Um, another amazing thing about bringing things centralized to Confluence, right, I've showed you how I'm pulling something from Jira into Confluence, but check this out. So here's my Jira project, right? I have my board where the team is working on um, you know different tasks around this project, but we have this pages section here where I can, I've connected this to the project space so anybody can come in and like view a Confluence page right here in Jira to get updated information. So not only do they not have to go to a spreadsheet, they don't even have to leave Jira necessarily to get the information they want or the updates they want. The connection just like lives there, which is so cool. Now, another thing is you might have people who are working on tasks who just want to deal with email. And I get that. There's some people that just want to send you email updates or they want you to send them email updates like to-do lists. <sighs> That's hard to scale. Um, it's not a great experience. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the chat here. Um, uh... Oh, interesting. So uh, Taiwan said that they're they're moving stuff into Jira 
Moving the entire project management office to Jira. Whew, that sounds like quite that sounds like quite a lift. I hope I hope this live stream is helpful. Um, these views in in Jira are unbelievable, and the integration with Jira and Confluence, I'm like, it just keeps getting better and better. So let's <clears throat> let's go back to our email lovers. So for our email lovers, right, they're going to get updates from Confluence, which is pretty solid for those people who want you to send them. Hey, just send to my email what you want me to do in the project. I will do that thing. You don't have to write up a one-off email. You can have that person follow a particular page, and then you can use the power of at mentions right in Confluence to send, okay, hey, here is you. Here are the things I need you to do. Here's the information on the project. They're going to get an email that looks like this. And one of the great things is, um, while they can't just email you directly back, I was hoping that was a feature in Confluence that is not part of Confluence. Um, they do have these buttons at the bottom of every email, so they, you know, they can quickly react or they can add a comment, or they can go check out the whole page. So for your email <laughs> task doers, they have that option. Now, you might have people that are like, I don't want to go into Confluence. I want to live in Slack. Um, that's where I want to be. Um, I have a question here on pages in Jira. That is a good question. Uh, Dana wants to know if pages in Jira are available for data center and not just cloud. Oh, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. I remember the announcement. It may just be a cloud feature at this time because what's actually happening is I believe it's it's loading a an iframe to Confluence Cloud. You maybe could do that with an application link. I'm going to say that I think it's only available for cloud, but I'm not positive on that. That's an amazing question, though. Thank you. Dana. So let's say people are like, I want to live in my messaging app, right? I want to be in Teams. I want to be in Slack. Okay, that's cool. We can do that. So right here, I have a Slack channel and I am using the Confluence and the uh, Jira integrations so that when changes are made in our project space, those changes are brought right in here. So you can see um, Yosef updated the page. You can view the changes. You can like the, cha the page. You can take more actions here. So right here, if somebody's like, they want to live in Slack, they want to do their tasks and live in Slack, uh, but still give get updates and give updates, they could, you know, they could live in Slack. They can live in Teams if that's the way they want to do it. And that, you know, the valuable information still lives in Confluence. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so let's say you're like, no, I don't want to do any of that. Really, I just want my spreadsheet. And it's like, okay, if you just want your spreadsheet, we can do just a spreadsheet. So let's just say we just copy our spreadsheet and drop it right in here. And kudos to the Confluence team because it really held on to that formatting pretty well. But also, I'm not a huge fan of that formatting. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just, you know, clear all of these colors. Uh, where do I do that? It's, uh, it's, uh, oh no, I've forgotten how to clear colors in cells. Here we go. All right, let's simplify that. So here we just have a basic table for our project. Like if you just want to manage your project in a table in Confluence, it's still better than doing it in a spreadsheet. Some things you can do, right? So use at mentions. That will instantly connect people to the things that they're doing. Um, use date macros. Much better because they both look visually better and also people can like pick things. Another thing you should do is use a status macro. Status macros are great because you know there's colors. So you can say this is in progress or whatever. These really help bring stuff to life on, on your basic tables. Um, another thing you can do is add action items. So this is not the place to add that, but you could say, uh, ba, 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 do this. And then you can at mention someone, you know, Conrad, do this, and you could add a date here. And this will actually give Conrad a, a to-do item in Confluence. Um, this, again, these are fairly simple, but they're helpful uh, for basic task management in what is otherwise just a simple, simple page. And then, of course, you can also, <laughs> something that you can't do well in Excel is add bullets. So you, <laughs> you, know, you can say task one and task two. This, these sorts of things will at least help your table stand out better if this is the way the team really wants to manage tasks and collaborate on things. And of course, there is the lovely inline comments. So if you're like, hey, you know, um, Conrad, you're supposed to be working on this. I just want to make sure you're seeing this. You can add a comment here, save it, and they'll get an email notification. They'll get a notification in the Confluence app. Um, all right. So 
This is task management, which is an important part of collaboration, but I realize for some of you, you might be like, okay, what I really need to do is I need to manage an entire project, not just individual tasks. So for that, we have a few options. So <clears throat> here is our beautiful table once again. Um, <laughs> you might be currently working with a table like this to manage like the information on how is our project doing. Or you might have some kind of report or board out there. Or maybe you have some kind of chart that you're share, you know, that you're sharing with the people on the team to show them how the project is doing. So how you display the status of a project depends on who you are. Like some teams really want to see this, a task by task breakdown. But some teams are like, yeah, no, that's just way too much detail for me. I need like I need an, a better overview. So one option would be something like this. So at the top of your page, let's just get rid of this table. It's been fun table, but <laughs> but also it hasn't. So right here at the top of my project page, I have this table that I'm kind of treating like a database, right? I've got this list of information data about the project, right? Who's driving the project? Who's the approver? Who's the team? Uh, this is a really cool thing in Confluence. You can have an entire team, like a team page. All the people are listed on the team. You can have resources on the team and you can at mention the team. So I just at mention the team here. They're all pulled in magically. It's super cool, super cool thing in Confluence, right? You can add macros in here like a due date. You can have a status and weekly updates. This is really awesome, right? So you can have a very quick place at the top of your project page where you have updates and you can see the update from last week so you can see the progress that's being made. This is a really great table to have at the top of all of your project pages. In fact, what you probably want to do is Confluence comes with a great project page template. It has one of these. You will probably want to update it, customize it, add some new fields, uh, you know, whatever your team wants but then use that template for every project page. So people looking for projects always know where to find the, the most important information. Now you can see I've, I've put this in a page properties macro. The page properties macro is really important because you can actually take the, the data that lives on one page and you can bring it, uh, you know, make reports with it. And I'll show you that. That's where we're looking at like multiple projects and how to, how to sort of report on multiples. So here is all of my information about my project right here, easily updatable. Now, one, one thing that can become an issue here is um, if people kind of uh, aren't consistent with how they're using this. So for example, instead of like using the status macro here, if somebody's like, oh, the status, like, well, this week <laughs> we're doing, you know, and they, they type out a whole status update there, sort of mistaking, mistakenly like not understanding what that field is for, that can become troublesome. That can actually break the page properties um, setup because you're not using it consistently. So another option that we've started using, um, <laughs> mainly because we love it so much, is um, we have an app called um, Orderly Databases. So you can see I have this, you know, here's a project, same kind of deal, right? Same database entry up top here. But what's great about this is these are these are uh, enforced, so to speak. So I just click it, I can pick whatever status I want. Um, here, I can just enter text, but here I can only at mention people, right? So it, it's really helpful to, um, to keep the way our projects are uh, documented organized, really, really organized. And I'll show you in a minute how we can like view all of this content. But this makes it so much faster for the project manager. And if you didn't notice, I'm not even in edit mode on the page. I just edited this part, which is so fast and quick. So um, another thing might be maybe your team is just working on, oh, um, Manuel wanted to know how do you create a team in Confluence? So to create a team uh, but, 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 right here um, in the people menu, Here's our people. I can invite new teammates, and ba -da 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 -da, I can create a team right here. So you can hit that button. You uh, get taken into that team creation experience. You invite people, and then you you build that team page. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, Taiwan. The the app is called Orderly Databases, uh, and it's free for ten years users. So 
you know, try it out. It's a ton of fun. You will not be able to use Confluence without it. <laughs> Once you've tried it, it's just like unbelievable. Okay, so let's say your 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 team is like, we do want to see just tasks, but we're we're using other apps. We want to see the view from other apps. That's cool. Like I mentioned, there are integrations with other apps. So like maybe you're working in Trello and you just like bring Trello in. That's where we're doing our work. So you have a Trello board here. People can interact with this. Well, you can't interact with it now because I'm looking at it in edit mode, but here's a full Trello board right here, right? Where, where my team could um, you know, look at how the project's doing. Here's another one. Here is the uh, project roadmap uh, macro from Jira. I'm sorry, I have not done much with my demo Jira project, so this is not a beautiful view, but essentially we could we could look through the entire roadmap of our project to see how is the team actually doing. Um, you know, signs are pointing to maybe the team is successful based on this, but th you know, there's another view people can use to look at the success. Now, if you're like, we're not using Jira, we're not using Trello, I don't have the budget for other apps, here's something that you could do to, to make a more visual report on how the project is doing. Create a table just like this one, you know, put some columns in it, just like an agile board. Um, you know, um, well, that's not the right place to put one, but uh, maybe we add a backlog here. Boop, 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 boop. And then just use the panel macro. So this is a, um, a, a fun hack that a coworker showed me. Um, the Hindi word that we like to use is shagad. It's just a very clever, innovative way to, um, you know, to do something with the resources we already have. So we could say like, um, you know, uh, right. So, so here, very quickly, I am creating what look like sort of cards, and I can I can see what they, you know, see how the team is working, and I could say, okay, yep, yeah, this one, I'm gonna move it, right, because it's in progress now. We're working on this, and so you just have a, a much simpler way to look at the project, but this is just using what's in Confluence, right? So you have multiple different ways to report on tasks if people want to see a view of those individual tasks, whether you're working in one app, you know, another app, or you're just working in Confluence. Look at this little board that we just made here. And then finally, if people want to see charts or tables, you know, maybe you're looking at financial information that needs to be reported. Luckily for us, <laughs> the Confluence Cloud team just dropped charts. So um, you might be looking at this and saying, wow, it looks like this, this uh, guy demoing here has no idea about finance or the world of, of, of financial reporting. That's true. I just made this up. So let's say we're looking at <laughs> you know, uh, the forecasted budgets that we have for the project and what we've actually spent. Right. Very quickly, I could make a bar chart to look at this. Um, Ah, shoot, you know, I can see that I forgot to name this one. So I'm just gonna jump in. And the cool thing is these are connected directly to this um, table. So I can update the amounts and this will automatically update, but I want to customize it. So let's give this a title, um, actual versus, yep. Yeah, and then this should be what? Um, amount in USD, US dollars, baby. There we go. There we go, perfect. And you can also see that I actually have multiple. So I have another chart here. These are both connected to this source table, which is which is just really, really awesome. So I could, totally, I could totally ruin our numbers here, but you can see these are automatically updating. So if you need to report on numbers or financials, you can do that as well. And this can be dropped right into a single Confluence page where people can come and look at how is our project doing? How are we doing the tasks? How are we doing the finances? How are we doing overall? Whatever you need to report, you can do that in Confluence. So how do we do it with multiple projects? Well, you could have <laughs> your spreadsheet here, once again, where <clears throat> you're showing all your projects, project A, project B. I haven't even filled this out, but you can imagine how messy this is going to look. People have to scroll to see all the stuff. They're going to have to scroll through multiple projects. Your stakeholders have about 0% interest <laughs> in looking at your your project report. They they just don't want to get the information that way. So couple we have a couple of options here. So the first would be we create this overview page. We'll just call it project. This is where our stakeholders could come. Now we could have our big table here again, but this is just not ideal because of just how enormous it is. So what I would recommend instead is having a project page where you have something like this. So this is called uh, a page properties report. There's a, there's a macro that's building this report right now. And on each 
uh, what's actually happening is it's pulling in those bits of data that we entered on all of our project pages automatically. So um, we have the title here, we have all of the contributors listed, right? The due date, the status. These are all coming from those individual project pages automatically. So if somebody were to update one of the project pages, this whole list just perfectly and magically updates by itself. And I can control what things um, what things display here. So maybe I want to come in and update this so that, uh, like right now, I'm showing all the pages uh, that are marked as projects that are in the current space, right? Um, that have page properties. But maybe I want to filter that more. But in this case, I want to get rid of a column. So I, I think, um, I would say I don't want to see contributors. Whoops, I just I just hit the back button there. I didn't even know I could do that. I'm gonna get rid of the contributors column here. Um, and then let's let's have a look at that. Okay, so that's just a little bit easier to read. I'm gonna save that. And now I have a slightly more, well, yeah, I guess I have to publish. I have a slightly more um, slimmed down view of all of the projects. So this is looking better already. Um, but again, I mentioned this can be a little breakable. You saw from my editing experience there, it can be a bit tricky. Um, stuff can snap, stuff can break. So this is again where that orderly databases app is pretty great. And this is one of the ways that we're using it heavily internally. So here is the same view. Here's all of our projects and I can scroll here. I'm gonna get this out of the way so I can see them all better. So here's all of our projects with statuses and everything. Now you might be thinking as I am like, okay, this is too much information. Didn't we talk about this? So I have a lot of options here. So I could look at this as cards. Ah, oh, that's like already a lot easier to look at. Or maybe I want to have a table view, but first of all, I want to filter for um, all of the projects where the status is um, on track. And then I want to sort it by, let's see, I want to see the drivers. So that's my project managers. And I want to get rid of some of these. These are just, there's too much here. Like get rid of the key outcomes and I want to get rid of the approver and the contributors so that I can just see a simplified view of what projects are happening, who's running them, when do they do, what's the status, and then that update, right, which is important to me as a stakeholder. And then at any time, I can click any one of these to be taken right to that project to see the full, you know, full information of the project and then all of, you know, all of the data about the project. So this is just, you know, orderly just sort of like takes that to the next level. But of course, you can also get started with page properties as long as as your your PMs and people working on the project are okay with the sort of like breakability nature of it. Um, let's see, I have it in the chat. How does it look when you use page properties macro on a project page? So it, it looks just like this. Uh, is it, yes, <laughs> yeah. So here's the page properties macro right here at the top of a page. It just looks like a table when you are not in editing view, which is great, um, which is you know similar to orderly also looks like just a simple table. So when you're viewing the page, it's just like, oh, there's a table with great information about this project, which is perfect. All right, so let's look at the final sort of problem that I have run into, um, which is stakeholders, right? We've talked about this a little bit. Getting your stakeholders to actually read what you are saying is tricky. And I really think that's because you're managing stuff over here in your project management apps. And then like, what are you sending them? Are you sending them emails? Maybe they're tailored to the stakeholder because you're trying to like get them to read it. Or maybe that's what they've asked for. Or maybe you're also sending reports and dashboards and updates. There's just a variety of things we try to use to get our stakeholders to look at things, but they're also very disconnected from the actual work. Like you, you saw how I just clicked a link and jumped into the project page. And I could then go to any Confluence page below that and see the work that's actually being done, the collaboration that's happening. And so I think part of why it's hard for stakeholders to really see what's going on in the project is we just give them a report at the end of the day. Maybe that's what they say they want. Mm, I don't buy that. Okay, so we could give them one of these, but I, I would encourage you, you not to. So instead, um, we wanna share our Confluence pages. And I get it, sometimes our stakeholders are like, I don't want the project page, I want a synopsis. So there is a really great uh, template that's in Confluence Cloud, it's called 
business status update, which is really cool for exactly that. You know, here is just a great template br broken down by all the different things that your stakeholders might be interested in. You could delete some of these sections, you could add new sections, and I'm showing this as a page, but what would be a great idea, especially in a case like this where I have a space for this project, is use the blog, right? Publish one of these weekly as a blog post um, so that every week your stakeholders know they can come to you know come to this space and read an update of what's happening. It's easy to read, right? It's well laid out. It looks great. Um, but maybe they're like, well, I don't want to come to a Confluence space. That's cool. We, we already showed how you can um, you know push things to Slack or Teams. You can do that for any single page. You can say Slack notifications, and you can connect this right to either a Slack individual. Um, or a channel. So I could say like for this particular page, I want all the updates to go to the channel. Um, that might be the option. Or maybe you're like, okay, they really just want an email. So you could, you know, you, you should tell them like, come here and watch this page or actually come in and watch the blog in the space. Then every new blog post, they're going to get an email. But maybe your stakeholders are like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's like, okay, we're still going to keep the information in Confluence, but you could come here. You could put in the emails for all of your stakeholders with a custom message and they are going to get a notification right in their email. Maybe that's exactly the way they want it and it will be formatted really nicely and they'll be able to read through your update. But the content and all the collaboration is still happening in Confluence. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So then finally, maybe your stakeholders are like, but I want, I want a document. I want it, I want it printed on letterhead. You know, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> you could also export it as a PDF. There is a built-in PDF exporter in Confluence. So you could come to the page and you could say, uh, da, da, da. well, they're actually covered up here because I have our apps. Yeah, here we go. Export, export to PDF or export to Word. Those are going to look pretty simplistic. Maybe they're okay, but you could also check out um, at K15T, we make scroll PDF exporter. So you could have like a really branded, beautiful document where you know it could be on style, on brand for you. If, the, if that's what your stakeholders really want, you can give them whatever they want in whatever format, wherever they want it. Uh, let's see, Dana is saying in the chat. Let's see. Yeah, I think, so yeah, let's see. So the question is, could we connect the blog directly to Slack so that all blog posts go to Slack? That's a really good question. Let's jump into that. So I'm in the space settings here which are fairly newly redesigned and I just absolutely love the way they look now because you can understand what's going on. So right here in integrations, I'm gonna go to Slack notifications. Um, I know the Jira one was quite flexible in what was sent out. Let's see what, what we can uh, pick here. Do, do, do. Yeah, right here, adds blog posts. So you could set up an automation so that it's it's only when somebody adds a, or edits a blog post, that's when the notification goes to the, the Slack channel. Um, and like you could have a separate Slack channel for um, good software, swag store, stakeholders, and all they get are the blog updates. That's an amazing idea, Dana, because then they're not getting all the updates the team has. It's just the, you know, just the how is the project doing style updates. You could even have one, you know, one channel where multiple projects are, you know, from their space, the blog post is going out to that, to that Slack uh, channel or to that team, uh, Channel? Do they call them channels and teams? I can't remember. Um, yeah, that's such a great idea. Again, you're like tailoring all the content for your stakeholders, which is just brilliant. So I can see I'm going a little over time, but if you can hold on, I just want to show you one other thing that's pretty cool, which is called Atlas. So Ed Lassie and you know them, they, they are always trying new things. I really love this thing, folks. So this is called Atlas, and this is uh, a separate app from Confl or from Atlassian that's currently free because it's in beta and it's geared toward project communication and collaboration, which is like, wow, that's great. <laughs> I wish I could say this live stream was sponsored by Atlassian, but it's not, but my cup is. Um, this is so cool. So the way At Atlas works is we have our team. Remember I showed you that team? They're still here, um, the ones that we made in Confluence. And what the team can do is 
they can create these Twitter style updates. So Yusuf is the project manager. So each week, Yusuf is prompted by Atlas to create a Twitter like post. So a very short post, you can at mention people just like you do in Confluence and say, this is what we're doing um, and give some key information. Like he changed the uh, due date and moved the status of the project. And then anybody can follow one or more projects that are being worked on in the company, which is super cool because you know Aziza can have her feed of all the projects that are happening that she's interested in. Every week, she's gonna get an update, just once a week, right? She'll get that update, see what's going on, and then she can comment and say, hey, you know, this, and you know, as an admin at Good Software, this might be something I need to be involved in, let me know. And they can have a whole threaded discussion right in here. Now you can see, I have a bunch of empty updates here because I haven't been continually updating my project. I'm a terrible project manager. But Atlas is really, really cool. And you can see it's also connected to um, another, uh, they have goals, so you can have company-wide goals and you can connect those to your projects. I've connected it to the JIRA project here. I've connected it to the Confluence space. You can have tags for sorting. They just keep pouring new stuff into Atlas and it's just really, really interesting. So if you have any interest in Atlas, and if you wanna see more, like I said, it's not Confluence, it's another app, but it kind of integrates with Confluence. If you're curious about that, just let us know um, because I'd be happy to show a little more. All right, friends, oh, that was a half an hour full of collaboration and project management, but we are not done. That's right. We want to look at more project management topics in Confluence. That's what we do here at K15T. And so if you can hold on, in about 10 minutes, you will be redirected to a live stream. Live stream all about project management and Confluence. I'm really excited about this because what we're doing is we want you to jump in the comments section on that video and let us know what else do you want to learn about for project management? What topics do you want us to explore deeper? We've created an overview for that reason because we want you, the community, to tell us what you want to learn more about. We have been managing projects in Confluence for over 10 years here at K15T, so we have a lot of experience, but we want to know what are the things that your team is trying to do with Confluence, and we will make videos and share what we have learned. Um, Shout out also to Orderly and the Orderly team. Thank you so much for letting me show Orderly databases today and helping me with that. I just love Orderly databases so much. I've made so many. Um, maybe check that app out. It is free for 10 users. And then also I showed some project overview pages here today. So those are those pages where I'm showing all the different projects and what your stakeholders might be interested in. We have a great article over on Rock the Docs, which is our site full of Confluence best practice content. Maybe give that a read through or share that with some of your uh, teammates, uh, Taiwan, that might be helpful for you as you're moving everybody uh, into JIRA and hopefully some confluence for your project management work. Um, and finally, thank you so much for joining. Hold on for that premiere um, as we continue to explore how to use confluence to share what you do best. See you at the premiere.
Hey everybody, I just realized we're still live. We've got five minutes before the premiere, so w why am I just standing here quietly waiting for it? Um, throw into the chat if you have any questions. Um, we are super excited about this video. Let me tell you, I have gone through an entire haircut since we started making this video, um, which is a lot because, you know, that's maybe, I don't know, one month cycle or so. Um, we have collected feedback from uh, we have to have feedback from at least eight people, I think. <laughs> eight people. We have collected from a bunch of people at K15T who are directly managing projects. Um, we, Our process for creating these videos is we put out there to everybody like, hey, we're making a video about this. Share all of your wisdom and your knowledge. Um, and we heard from so many great PMs, um, including Opa Niels, who is like the project management guru at the company. Um, so many great items that are included in there. And we had to cram them in to an 11 and a half minute video. Uh, it, it's actually the longest video we've ever made, uh, but it's so packed. We're like, we can't get rid of any of this. It's like, it's like, well, we have too much frosting for the top of the cake. Should we throw this away? Like, no, of course, <laughs> of course not. We'll just make more videos. So I'm really hoping that as you're watching through it, you're like, hey, I saw a thing, but I wanna see how you did that. Or I want you to talk more about how you do that. Or, oh, I gotcha. I have a thing that uh, you know you didn't think of. Where is that? Please add that to the comments. You're always thinking of great things that we didn't think of. That's why you're all so amazing. <laughs> That's why we're so lucky to have you here. I'm, I'm uh, scanning the chat here. There's no questions coming in. Um, another question that you may have is, um, is why, why are we talking about project management in Confluence? Why not project management in JIRA? Um, we love Jira. Jira is great, but we just love how you can connect what people are doing with the tasks that, that are being managed. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch -ch. Scaling Confluence for project and program management has been difficult. Any recommendations for doing this at large scale? <sighs> Over a thousand people. Oh, that's so tricky and I have so little time. Um, well, Dan, I mean, you could probably do a live stream on everything you've learned. I'm sure you have so many insights. It's really hard to scale um, Confluence. We actually just released an article on Rock the Docs about building a content architecture that will help people to use Confluence and, and grow it in a healthy way. And the trick is it's sort of a chicken and egg situation where like you need to have content for people to want to use it, but for people to want to use it or, or uh, when people use it, they have to create content. I don't think I said that well, but um, I think with project management, you kind of have to start with like a beta approach. So you take one team or one program or, or division and work with them that way and then find the successes there. It is not, it's not something where you're like, we're rolling this out. But if you think about it, zero tools work out well like that. When IT is just like, here's your new tool, good luck. That's not great. You need to show the success. So you have to have these like beta initiatives where you're sort of demoing to everybody. Here's the deal, here's, here's what's gonna happen. All right, friends, the premiere is coming. I'm gonna jump off. You should be redirected to the video. Can't wait to see you there. Uh, can't wait to see your comments. Bye. <laughs>